Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned into our YouTube channel for our weekly video analysis. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So today we're going to look at small caps. We're going to put that 200-day moving average to the test, show you how to improve performance with a little smoothing, and then compare performance to SPY. So just to let you know, on Saturday, November 6th at noon Eastern time on Stock Charts TV, I will be presenting trend following. I'll go over the theory, the expectations, and the reality behind trend following. And if you look here, you can see the topics that we'll be covering. We'll go over the key assumptions and characteristics of trend following strategies. We're going to look at a number of indicators and the signals that are generated. And then we're going to look at, say, expectations versus reality. Because, you know, you look at a 20-year chart where you see 20-year returns on trend following. They look great. But getting to those great returns is not always a smooth ride. In fact, it's often bumpy. So we're going to backtest these indicators so we can set our expectations. And then I'm going to show you how to improve the results by adding a market regime filter, smoothing with a little moving average, and adding a momentum filter to capture a little bit of excess performance. Now, here's one of the slides I want to show you here when I talk about smoothing. Because basically, I tested the S&P 500 stocks, historical constituents, going back to January 2000. And this is if you bought and sold a cross of the 200-day moving average. So if you just use a 1-200 cross, which is a close crossing above and below the 200-day, you had a 23% win rate, and that's not very good. But if you just smoothed it with a five-day moving average, your win rate goes up to 28%. If you smooth that five-day even further with a 20-day moving average, your win rate goes up to 38%. And if you use the 50-200 cross, which is the golden cross, your win rate gets almost to 50% at 46%. And also you can see the number of signals drops dramatically when you smooth out that signal cross from a close to a five day to a 20 day to a 50 day. So that's just one of the indicator groups that we're testing. And I'm gonna test other indicators like a Bollinger Band breakout, Keltner Channel breakout. We'll look at the trend composite and Stoke close as well. So I hope to see you there on Saturday, this Saturday, November 6th at noon Eastern time. So I still use a lot of classical technical analysis, but what I've learned over the years is you need to set expectations. And in order to set expectations, either you need to have a lot of experience or you need to do some sort of back test, quantitative analysis. And so the Russell 2000 has been battling its 200-day moving average, and it's back above, and it's bullish. But I wanted to see how it tests relative to the 200-day over, well, it's been, in, it's been trading since 2001, so we're going to back test it going back to 2001. And so on this chart here, we've basically got the 200-day, and the red arrows show when we cross below, and the green arrows show when we cross above. And you can see we had a lot of whipsaws here in August and September and October. And we had some whipsaws there in the first half of 2020, and then a little whipsaw there in September 2020. So a lot of whipsaws. And if I scroll back down through this chart, I mean, look at this period here. You would have just given up on the 200-day if you've been buying and selling every cross above and below the 200 day. And finally, we get a breakout here and we do get some trend. And then we got a cross below and that cross actually happened just before the COVID crash. So you would have been out just in time to avoid this big decline. But as far as, you know, deciding is the moving average a good signal to take, we really need to back test it. And so that's what I've done. And by the way, this histogram here shows when you're below the 200-day, it's red. When you're above, it's green. And so I did a little back test here in Amy Broker. 
and there were uh, quite a few signals. I'll go ahead and open up the uh, results here and highlight that. So we can see that overall your annual return would have been 4% if you had bought and sold every cross of the 200 day. And, and that's not exactly great. And that is because we had quite a few whipsaws along the way. And so if you look at the total number of trades, we had 88 trades, we had 22 winners and 66 losers. So 25% of the time you had a winning trade, the average profit was 11% and 75% of the time you had a losing trade and the average loss was just 2%, but you had a bunch more, uh, many more losers than winners. But what we need to do is we need to smooth this out a little bit. You can't use a one day or a close crossing above and below the 200 day because you're going to get a lot of whipsaws. And if you simply smooth that out with the five day moving average, you're going to reduce the number of trades. You're going to reduce the number of whipsaws and you're going to see that it's going to perform better. So here are the results if we just did the five day crossing above the 200 day instead of the close. And you can see our average, our compound annual return was 5%. So it went from 4% to 5%. That's a lot better. And we had 39 trades, less than half as many trades as before. Our winning percent went up to 41%. Average gain went up to 14%. We had 59% losers and the average loss was 4.24%. So you can see just by adding a five-day moving average and not being so jumpy, you can really help improve performance overall. Now let's look at a chart here to see how this looks. So here are the, a few of the signals that we saw, say, since the uh, middle part of 2017. You had a 50% run in 281 days. And you got a bearish signal before that pretty sharp drop at the end of 2018. You got a late signal here, and that's the thing about trend following signals. They're gonna always lag. And then you can see a bunch of whipsaws, and then you got a pretty good signal, but it, it was wiped out by the COVID crash, or most of that gain was. You didn't get a loss, but you avoided this crash. And then you got a little whipsaw, and then you participated in a 50, 50% advance that lasted 307 days. And if we hone in on what's happening here, you can see we got some whipsaw here where we got below the five day moving average for one day and then right back above. So currently the five day is above the 200 day and that happened in early October. And so we're on an upswing in the Russell 2000 ETF. And this signal occurred before the big breakout that we saw this week. Now over at Trend Investor Pro, I use a combination of classical technical analysis combined with quantitative insights. I've also got a systematic side where I have an ETF ranking table with trend signals based on Stoke close. But here's part of a commentary from October 29th on Thursday. And I was watching IWM. First of all, I was watching MDY because it was breaking out of a big triangle leading IWM. And then if you look at IWM, you look at the biggest components in IWM, healthcare is the biggest sector. And I pointed that out last week, hat tip to Jonathan Krinsky over at NKM. Uh, but we can see here that small cap healthcare was getting a breakout. And that was a positive for IWM last week already. And then if we look at the IWM chart, we had the five day above the 200 day. So that gave you a bullish bias. And then down here, I've got Stoke Close, and Stoke Close was bullish. It had whipsawed, but you're going to get whipsaws in trend following indicators when you have a trading range. But what I was focused on was what was happening within that trading range. And if you look here, we had a triangle, we had a breakout, and it failed. And then another triangle formed, and we had another breakout. And I think this dip here was a bit of noise because I still thought the cup was half full. In other words, we're in a bull market. The market regime is bullish, which we track here at trendinvestorpro.com. 
IWM, the five day was above the 200 day, so that was bullish. And we had a breakout there. Even though we threw back, we got to expect some noise because we're in the middle of earning season. And so we're breaking out really for real now, breaking out of a trading range that goes back to March. But the real signal, I think, was this triangle breakout here last week. And so we're just continuing on that signal in small caps. So what if we smooth even further by using a 20 period moving average instead of a five period moving average? So the green line is a 20 period, red is a 200 period, and then we've got the 2200 oscillator down below and you can see it turns red when the 20 days below and green when it's above. And you think, well, that's gonna eliminate even more whipsaws and improve performance. Well, you're still gonna get whipsaws, but look, your signals are gonna come a lot later. So it's kind of a double edged sword. So I went ahead and ran the numbers here and I'll show them to you. And it doesn't seem to help much when you go to a 20 period moving average. Because if you look here, you can see your average gain was down to three point, you're sorry, your compound annual return was down to 3.73%. And you had 46% winners, so that was better. Your average gain was 15.42%, 54% losers, and average loss was 6%. But it really wasn't that great because if you look at the equity line, which I'll show you in a minute here, we'll go to the charts here. This is if you had bought and sold that strategy. And you can see it's been pretty much flat, buying and selling across above when the 20 day crosses above and below the 200 day. We had this big surge here and we're up, but you can see it's pretty much been flat. The green line is the equity line. And this is buy and hold for the S&P 500 right here. In fact, let's test the S&P 500 because it's a lot more trendy than IWM. So here is SPY with the 20 day and the 200 day moving average. And you can see the signals with the red arrow and the green arrow. And this is the uh, price oscillator that shows the difference between the two moving averages. And you can see when the 20 days above the 200 day and below. But of course, we need to quantify these signals with a proper back test here. And if we look at the trades that we've had over the last 18 years or so, you can see that the compound annual return, 6.7%, very respectable. There were only 15 trades. Nine were winners and six were losers. Your average gain was 19.5%. Your average loss was 3.6%. So SBY is clearly a lot more trendy than IWM. And we can also see that when we look at the equity curve, if you had just traded this strategy the green line is the equity curve, and you can see it rises. It took its hit with COVID, but it rebounded quite well. So this is a pretty good trend strategy for SBY. And actually on Saturday, I'm gonna show you my favorite moving average combo for SBY and broad market timing. And I hope to see you there. And that is Saturday, November 6th on Stock Charts TV at noon Eastern time. So if you'd like to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, you can click on the link in the description below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again next week. Have a great day.